Bethel Resort. This is just one step in the recovery process after Hurricane Ian. Fox 4's Elise Chingari is getting an exclusive look at the hard work these crews have done over the last nine months, and it's picking back up again in about an hour now, right, Elise? Good morning, Lisa. Exactly. And you know, we've been following these crews ever since Hurricane Ian. It's basically been our promise here at Fox 4 to continue up with all of this rebuilding that's happening ever since Hurricane Ian. And these crews, we've in some sense been able to shadow them. We've shown how they've been able to take boats out of the mangroves, even using helicopters and along with the state that's been helping them as well. And then this week, those same crews are over here on Fort Myers Beach and they're rebuilding these massive docks that that are over here. I'm sure many of our viewers, if you've been out here to Fort Myers Beach, you really can't miss it. There's this really large barge here behind us that's about 150 feet large, we're talking, and a 200 ton crane that is sitting right there on top of it. Let's get to some aerial views from our Sky Fox 4 to show you just exactly what we are talking about in this area here and all of that massive rebuilding here along the beach. So much of this area is obviously a construction zone. Just take a look at what it looks like this week, roughly nine months since Hurricane Ian hit here. The crews here are with RJ Gorman Marine Construction as their executive director, vice president of operations. Tyler Marks explains to us the process here when it comes to getting these new docks installed. We're in the middle of rebuilding Pink Shell Resorts uh, Marina that was destroyed from Hurricane Ian. Uh, we've been installing golden aluminum floating docks that are actually made here in Fort Myers. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see a local dock manufacturer selling their local docks and having them put in after the storm. Uh, but as far as I know, this is the first full uh, marina rebuild that's happened post Ian, uh, actually on the beach. I'm told some of the most difficult parts are being able to precisely lift the dock sections and the pilings, but as you can see, that work is almost never ending over here on Fort Myers Beach. The crews hope to get this large dock ready by the end of this week to move on to other docks throughout the area. Of course, they are also dealing with our rainy season as they are trying to get all of this done as soon as possible. And you know, when I was speaking with Tyler Marks there, he says that he just has a lot of pride, him and his crews, so much pride for the work that they're doing doing here. They said it's almost hard to describe to so many people what it's like for this area to look like after a hurricane. And he says there's just so much progress already being made. Lisa, we will remain here all morning. Again, those crews will be set to arrive here in the next hour. They tell us they're going to take us over on this barge and show us exactly all of the work that's going into place to fix these docks here along Fort Myers Beach. Live here on Fort Myers Beach, Elise Chingari, Fox 4. Looking forward to it, Elise. Thank you. And in just a matter of hours, construction will start on the Slipway Food Truck Park and Marina in Cape Coral. The park is at the foot of the Cape Coral Bridge right along the Caloosahatchee River. The food trucks can station there 10 at a time, and people can get there by car or boat. It's also pet friendly. A project partner tells Fox 4 this will be a one-of-a-kind destination for events and festivals. In the construction phase, it'll it'll bring hundreds of jobs. Uh, we haven't determined our total capacity of how many employees we'll have year round, but that'll that'll rank certainly in the dozens and have a very strong economic impact in Cape Coral. Now he says they are still waiting on a site development permit from the city, but the project is still expected to finish by the end of 2024. And again, that groundbreaking ceremony is today. St. Matthew's House will have a food distribution today in Naples. They'll be at Center Point Church from 10 to 2. The organization says it fed 320 families in Immokalee yesterday. You're looking at video from the walk up distribution. This was at Limitless Church. St. Matthew's House says it's seeing more need right now because of inflation, the hurricane, and students being out of school for the summer. This morning, one person is in custody in a homicide investigation in Collier County. The sheriff's office says one person was shot and killed on Apple Street. Now, we are working to get you more information on this shooting. We will keep you updated. All right, take a look at this incredible video. A driver plowing right into a gas station as that man was walking right inside of this building. This happened in the Tampa area, and oh my goodness, that video is tough to look at. Deputies in Hillsborough 
Monroe County say that the driver, Anthony Katosh, slammed right into the front doors of travel centers of America and hurt that person who was walking inside. The sheriff called this a miracle that the victim didn't have more serious injuries. Now, deputies believe Katosh did this on purpose. He's now facing criminal mischief charges this morning. This is a story everyone is talking about. It is a race against the clock this morning to find the missing submersible that disappeared in the Atlantic Ocean while heading toward the wreckage of the Titanic. The U.S. Coast Guard now says that they believe the oxygen supply on board the Titan will run out in about an hour from now at 7.08 this morning. Five people are on board the Ocean Gate submersible. Rescue crews have rushed more ships and vessels to where the sub disappeared. They've been hoping that the banging sounds that were heard Tuesday night and early yesterday morning would help narrow the search. This morning, we're hearing from a retired Navy physician from Miami who explains what the passengers could be experiencing right now if they're still alive. You become weaker, you become disoriented, um, you have loss of focus, and you have a loss of the ability to see, the, so you lose your peripheral vision. It's, it's a horrific way to die. Can't even imagine. And this morning, we are learning more about those missing passengers. The wife of one of them may have a historic connection with the Titanic wreckage. Listen to this. Reports say Wendy Rush, who's the wife of Stockton Rush, He's the pilot and CEO of the tour company Ocean Gate, is the great, great granddaughter of Isidore and Ida Strauss. They were both on board the Titanic. They both died when that ship crashed in 1912. Isidore was a co-founder of the Macy's department store. The Strausses were known for being some of the most wealthiest people on the Titanic and for their love for each other. Many survivors say they saw Ida refuse a spot on the lifeboat and instead choose to stay with her husband on the ship. A report says the couple's story was the inspiration for the scene in the 1997 movie Titanic. Well, Southwest Florida, the tropics are busy and Tropical Depression 4, which is right behind Tropical Storm Brett, has already developed. The latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center is up next in your full forecast. Melanoma is the most aggressive skin cancer. It can be deadly if it's not caught early. So coming up in today's Your Healthy Family, I'm showing you what to look out for. First, let's get a quick check of your traffic hotspots. Karen Farrell made me feel like I was family. It was like working with my brother. I felt they were fighting for me. What more can you ask for in a lawyer that someone's fighting for? You? They're like family, you know, you can trust them. I just felt like I was a person. They actually wanted to help me. Six fifteen is the time. Here's a look at some of the top stories we're following right now. Former President Trump's legal team has started getting evidence from the Justice Department in the classified documents case. That includes transcripts of grand jury testimony, copies of surveillance video, and multiple recordings, like the 2021 tape of Trump admitting to keeping a classified document about Iran. The House Ethics Committee is getting ready to investigate California Representative Adam Schiff. Republican lawmakers plan to vote to censure him. He's accused of lying about Trump's ties to Russia during the 2016 presidential election. The rare move makes Schiff just the 25th lawmaker in U.S. history to be censured by the House. And the man suspected of leaking military secrets has pleaded not guilty to federal charges. 21-year-old Air National Guard member Jack Teixeira was indicted by a grand jury. He's been behind bars since April. Investigators say he posted classified materials on the Internet. He faces six counts of willful retention and transmission of national defense information. 
Well, Medicare's new drug pricing program is facing new legal challenges this morning. A large lobbying group for the pharmaceutical industry is suing over the plan. The group says the program is unconstitutional and gives the executive branch too much power. The pricing program is a provision of the Inflation Reduction Act. It allows Medicare and uh, it allows Medicare, I should say, to negotiate lower prices for certain prescription drugs. There have now been four lawsuits to overturn the plan. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer, but has a 99% cure rate if caught early. With summer here and more time to spend outside with the kiddos, in today's Your Healthy Family, I'm showing you the signs and how to prevent it. Melanoma varies in how aggressive it can be. If caught early, it can be, you know, removed from the skin and it doesn't have any long-term consequences. However, over time, melanomas can actually go deep in the skin and then invade the lymph nodes and spread elsewhere. And there can be mortality associated with it. So early detection is key in order to get the best outcomes. Dr. Shilpi Katerpal is a dermatologist with Cleveland Clinic and says cases of melanoma have been on the rise. The chance of developing melanoma increases with age, but it can still impact young people and all skin types. Make sure to get moles or other spots on your skin checked if you notice they're asymmetrical, have an irregular border or uneven color. A spot bigger than the tip of a pencil eraser or changing in some way should also be looked at. Dr. Caterpaul says sunscreen is key to protecting yourself from the disease as ultraviolet radiation from the sun causes nearly 90% of melanomas. We know sunscreen is a big factor, so if you are going to be outside, use a broad spectrum SPF of 30 or higher. It's important to reapply every two hours if you are going to be outside or if you get wet, making sure you use like a water resistant sunscreen. They also make UPF clothing, so if you're someone that doesn't want to lather up in lots of sunscreen, um, there's a ultraviolet protective factor in certain clothing you can buy. Now she says it's crucial to get regular skin checks, especially if you have a personal or family history of skin cancer. For Your Healthy Family, I'm Lisa Greenberg, and for more health stories, head to fox4now.com slash yourhealthyfamily. Well, first responders in Collier County got some recognition yesterday. 50 members of the Collier County Sheriff's Office, plus personnel from Collier County EMS, Naples Fire, Immokalee Fire, and Marco Island Fire were honored in the Phoenix Awards yesterday. This award is given to people who successfully resuscitate patients in cardiac events. The people they saved were also part of